Yo, what's good, y'all? In today's video, I got like, uh, um, I normally would say updated, but this is, I'm gonna say like this is remade, but at the same time, you can also consider it updated and stuff. If y'all remember before, I had made an, uh, how to make an admin panel series, it's about five to six videos, I believe, and stuff, right? So, the last time I worked on the admin panel was about six months ago, back in December and stuff, right? And I've obviously learned a lot more, about, a lot more and stuff. So, uh, Pretty much, I went back to it. I updated it and stuff. We made a whole bunch of stuff, and I cut out a lot of a lot of lines and stuff. So this is just generally a better version, like a better version, less lines and stuff. You know, because like pretty much, you want scripts to be able to like function at, function, of course, properly and to the best of their ability, while at the same time minimizing as many lines as possible and stuff. Make the script as simple as possible. So yeah, I'm gonna be going through I'm gonna be going through the remade version with y'all. Even though it'll pretty much look the same to pretty much about anybody who's uh watched the first one, but it definitely should look different and stuff. Now obviously I already have it made as I'm not gonna sit here. I'm not I'm on assembly so I'm not gonna sit here and retype the whole thing. I honestly don't, wouldn't even remember it. Like I definitely would forget some stuff. But anyway. So yeah. Um, as always, all scripts will be in the description and stuff. So if y'all need so if I need a reference, uh, of course, just look in the description for the scripts. If y'all need help, join the Discord server. You can ping or DM me for help. Um, or you can also just comment. It don't really matter to me. But yeah, I got stuff. I need help. Uh, I guess first off, we'll start off with the remote events. And that's something simple. Okay, so head on over to replicated storage. Insert a remote event, and I want you to name the remote event staff event. Right. If you were there for the first one, you remember there was about six to seven remote events. Yeah, I cut it down to one. Right. And then I guess we will do the local script. Okay. So we have the admin panel GUI. If you didn't see the first one and you don't know what it looks like, here's what it looks like. Now, I just want to first say I'm, I'm not a UI maker. I'm, I'm a scripter. So we're, yeah, if you don't fuck with it, then it is what it is. But anyway, that's what it looks like, right? So here is the admin panel handler script, right? So pretty much this right here is the function. By the way, I just want to reiterate. Um, the scripts will be in the description. So like if you like if I'm going too fast and like you're not able to copy everything down, just look in the description. But yeah. So we made three variables. First things first. Uh, we of course we got we got the user input service. We got the staff. We got the remote event, the staff event, and we also made a variable for the admin panel frame. Right. Because keep in mind the script is inside of the GUI. The first function is pretty much to activate the uh, admin panel, make it visible and stuff. You can change this keybind to whatever you want. Uh, I made it left alt. You guys can do whatever you want. So pretty much we fire their remote event, sending over the identification message verification. And you guys will see how this all works when I get to the server script. But yeah, then I use the 4IV and pairs loop to get all the children of the admin panel frame, pretty much everything here. And then pretty much if uh, the child is a text button, pretty much these things are text buttons. Then if we enter, if like our mouse enters it, it'll change the color to a bright gold. If it leaves, it'll return back to its default color of red. And then if I click any of the buttons, as you guys can see, it fires the remote event as well as um, it sends over like whatever the message, like whatever reason the, uh, the staff member has for uh, warning somebody or kicking somebody or whatever. And then we, what's it called? And then uh, we also have the text box one right here and stuff, right? We're pretty much, it's, just, it's doing the same thing as this, but obviously it needs a different function. And so with the focus loss, and then it sends over uh, whatever was the ban message and whatever was the ban username and vice versa with the unban, right? So that's the local script here, right? And then all of this, if you watch the first video, all of this, Pretty much, I took a few things out, but aside from that, it's pretty much the same. Like I took out like return and stuff, but aside from that, it's pretty much the same. But yeah, um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it and stuff for the uh, UI portion. So if we head on over to the server script, I'm going to go ahead and delete a certain. Part. Okay, so I want y'all to just do me a favor, and I want y'all to ignore the log portion, right? I want to ignore the log portion of this, um, of it pretty much and stuff because, uh, actually, hold on real quick. Actually, let me, hold on. Let me turn this off real quick. 
I'm gonna delete this part of the I'm gonna delete this part of the script for the, just for the video and stuff simply just because uh, it has like a discord thing for somebody and I don't want to accidentally leak the uh, okay 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 all right sorry about that but anyway yeah so anyway, back to the video so yeah, so you guys can ignore these log these log lines and stuff. That's pretty much just log in the command. You don't have to worry about that though. So just ignore that. But yeah, so we have a few variables. You know, the staff event just like before, the data store uh, saving saving all the band like all the band users and stuff. I get the te the text service as well as the messaging service. If you guys don't know what those are, text service is like like where you're chatting and stuff in the chat. The message service is how you're sending is like how you can you can use a service to send messages across different servers. And then just and then uh, the require, which is how you you know get a module script. So pretty much upon the player joining, it checks if it checks if they have any data at all, and if the first data is equal to banned, then it will kick them with the message you have been banned for. Then they will provide them with the reason, right? Then we have the variables. Um, we have the folder that stores all the variables. Then the variables target ID, freestyle, cooldown, yeah. And then we just have the same, it's just on a loop in case it fails the first time. Now here is where we have the actual commands, right? Um, I'm gonna go into that after I, after I cover these. So I just wanna explain these two, these two are, as you guys can see, it says crossover ban. Pretty much here is how you would have it to where you'd be able to ban a player that is currently in game, but not in the same server as a staff member. Like if you join a server and you're trying to ban somebody that's in a different server, as long as you have like this, these functions set up, correctly you would be able to do that because it would pretty much send this message it would send this message to any other uh place any other place and stuff, of course within the uh experience stuff that has this function set up and then as long as the messaging topic is the same it will ban the player with the provided message but yeah and then it'll do the vice versa or move or unban them i guess then right here we have the uh different command types and stuff like that so pretty much so pretty much verification right this simply uh triggers the uh module to pretty much check if a player is a member of a group if a player is a member of a group it will then uh pretty much either enable the ui or disable the ui because you can use the you can use the keybind to uh disable the ui and re-enable it then this function pretty much just creates a leaderboard it just creates a leaderboard of all the players in the game and makes it so that if you click their name um, it'll change the admin variable target ID value to uh, the player's user ID and stuff. Then these functions are uh, pretty much that's the cooldown, that's kick. Pretty much all these functions pretty much are very similar to the ones you saw if you saw in the first video and stuff. They look very similar and stuff. I just pretty much put them on a module script. I tried to shorten them as much as I could, but yeah, here is what we got to. And then I also have to add this though. These are different. I had to like because apparently there's this new thing where like there's jump power and there's jump height, so you have to enable jump power and then you change jump power value. So yeah, but yeah. So I just have all the commands on a module script now, and then as you guys can see, it looks like to me it looks a lot cleaner because like all you see is just you know some stuff like two variables, and then you fire the command with the given information, and then you just log the command. But yeah, so yeah, like I said, I'll have the scripts in the. Uh, description and stuff i hope that pretty much kind of explained and summed up the uh how this really this system really works of course if you have any questions or need any help just leave a comment down below i got you and stuff that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching if the video was helpful leave a like and subscribe let's get to 900 subscribers uh if we're not honestly if we're not already because yeah this video isn't releasing for like another three weeks so we, might, we probably will be at 900 by then if we are thank you guys for getting me a 900 but yeah i'll see you guys thank you for watching